What's up, guys? It's your girl Shay Univice, and you know I got soul, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited because this is the first time I'm talking to an artist that's from the UK. And I've been dying to just hear like what's going on over there. There's so many great artists that I just love, you know, Jack James, Flo, there's a few others I could mention. Mm -hmm. you me, like, you know, how has the UK influenced your sound? What was it like growing up over there? And, you know, just a little bit about what got you into music through that route. Um. How has the UK influenced my sound? Dare I say, I don't know if the UK influenced my sound, honestly. Mm. Because, um, okay, you know what? I feel like the element of the UK that did influence my sound at a point in time, um, as random as this may sound, was actually like the grime um, era when I was in school. Um, not many people know this, but before I was known as Shea Universe, this is when I was like real young though, like the school days. Um, I was, I like had a stage or like a phase where I rapped, um, oh. like primarily rap, I didn't even sing at all. Um, and I feel like that point there, this is probably another like secondary school or something. That point there, I was definitely very um, heavily influenced by the grime scene, JME, Skepta, like all of those kind of guys. Mm -hmm. But in terms of my singing, honestly, I really haven't been influenced by too many, by any UK people, really. The only person that comes to mind is like Sade, I would mm -hmm. say. But outside of that, most of my influences have been from the US, like, um, you know, the Brandies, the Erica Badoos, the D'Angelo's. I just grew up on a lot of like American soul music. Um, yeah. And also I started singing in the church. So, you know, gospel has always been a big part as well. But I would say my influences mainly came from America, actually. Yeah, I was actually gonna hop into that because you, know, you obviously hear it in your music, but that really, you know, that, was that sound readily available over there? Like Sorry, was that radios? Was it like did your parents introduce you? And I know your mother was a gospel singer. I love right. gospel, so you know that's my heart and soul. So that I think that's why I enjoy your stuff. Um, Aww. Was, <laughs> yeah. was that sound like you know readily available over there? Um, was what readily available? It's this like uh, Brandy's, the uh, Angelos. Oh, absolutely, mm. absolutely. I think that's actually one of the reasons why like most UK artists, if you notice, I don't, but most of them, they actually sing in American accents. So mm. they will talk in their British accent, but as soon as they start to sing a song, it switches into like an American kind of accent. Um, and that's really because most of the R&B that we all grew up listening to was literally American. But yeah, it was definitely readily available. Um, yeah, for sure. I had to ask because, like I said, I love all the sounds that are coming out of the UK. And obviously, I'm from Jersey. I don't mention that. I'm from Jersey. And, you know, like when I listen to your stuff, I get that Lauren Hill. You know what I'm saying? And it's hey, so interesting. Wow, that's a big compliment. Thank you. No, of course, of course. Especially the first song on the project, which we're going to dive into. But, you know, it, that, that just always interests me. So thank you for being the first artist I can actually ask that question to. Um, yeah, for sure. Thank but you. Yeah, of course, so let, let's hop into the, the project. Like I already told you, super solid. It might be my favorite piece of music that's come out in at least like the last six months. Um, because I just feel like I can actually play the whole thing through, and that's re really rare. Usually, wow. like the songs, you know what I mean. Um, and I really, really just love. I love it. I love it. And I know you have like the summertime as as a song and. There's also what I think it's Warzone Interlude, like that gives me winter vibes, just so you know. So I just think <laughs> there's so many songs and vibes on this project that are just gonna last a while. That's my opinion. But just tell me, you know, the meaning behind the project, Love's Letter. And, you know, I can tell it's a lot of self love involved, but just tell me your perspective on it. For sure, for sure. Um, well, I feel like love. Love is a very complex thing, you know, and it has so many different layers and sides and forms. Um, 
And Love's Letter, the reason why I chose to name it Love's Letter as opposed to Love Letter or Love Letters, which is what probably most people would have opted for, is because I really delve into the complexities of going through the journey of love itself, whether it is self-love, whether it's romantic love with your partner, whether it's God's love, whether it's um, familial love, like between you and your family or your friends, they all have their different forms and they all bring out different sides of you and teach you different things about yourself. So with this journey, honestly, there's, there's so much to it, but just to summarize it, so we start from a place of self-love and wholeness. I personally was born into the most loving two-parent household. They just poured into me every day, still pour into me daily. And they were just such a beautiful and wholesome example of love for me. And so I have definitely, um, just carry that, carry that with me. But the, the intro to the project kind of represents that starting point. And then you take, you go through a journey of, you know, growing older, um, finding love for yourself, whether that is with a partner or um, whether that's with a partner or, you know, just finding love for yourself. And usually that point when you're grown, when you are able to, make decisions for yourself is when you start to encounter like you know issues and heartbreaks um and it's not so straightforward it's not it's not so black and white there's a lot of gray area and then you get to a point where <clears throat> maybe you've been heartbroken or maybe something's happened that has put you in a position where you are anti-love or you just it's tainted your view of it. You're not as open to it as you were. And then you delve inward and you start to figure out your boundaries. You, you start to figure out what you need to do to protect and preserve your peace. Um, and that comes with self-love. And then from that, for me, finding self-love was kind of, it went hand in hand with also encountering God's love or, you know, returning back to God's love and then after that point you know you're back and you're better and you know better and you do better for yourself um, and it's kind of like a full circle moment because you started from a place of wholeness and you went through all of this stuff and you return back to that place of wholeness but just an elevated version so yeah that's kind of it just summarized there's so many bits in between but that's like the overall summary I would say wow I, I love that um I'm kind of, it's kind of almost like speechless because I definitely, when I'm listening to it, I get that, those vibes, right? And the fact that you're saying that, I just love, because um, there's, there's many layers to love, as you said, and I, I mentioned before, God's love, you know, parents love, yourself, relationships, and I think every song kind of can be applied to that, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I think another thing that's, I mean, that's really apparent is the 90s, 2000s vibe, right? But also kind of this modern vibe that you're not losing, which I think is very important um, to stick out to what's, I guess, popular, quote unquote, but mm -hmm. just also be something you want to listen to. It doesn't feel dated, you know? Um, right. So something I always ask every artist, is there any artist you were referencing um, when you made the project? You know what I mean? Like, obviously you mentioned the Brandys and D'Angelo's, but uh -huh. I always, I love asking this, is, was it like, were you trying to block that out when you made it? Or was were you just trying to really drag from them you know what i mean um so the thing with me is of course i do listen to music but i consciously really try not to like take in too much um taking too much like of what's going on with like throwback music like 90s r&b and stuff that is always my go-to because it's just kind of what i grew up on it has this nostalgic feel it just it makes me feel good but whilst i was creating the project and generally when i'm creating i try not to like i try to really listen to like my innermost voice because that's where the innovation comes from i guess nothing is 100 percent new under the sun right but we all have like our own unique little groove and with this project, I wasn't necessarily taking reference from anyone specific, honestly. But I think I'm the kind of artist where like my influences, for example, Lauren Hill, um, all the people that I grew up listening to and still frequently listen to, um, they just kind of effortlessly show up in some of my musical decisions. It's not a thing I premeditate or really think about, yes. but you know, they show up in different ways. And so I would definitely say now, looking back at the full body of work, Lauren Hill is someone like, I can see the 
it gives me modern day Lauren Hill, but it wasn't necessarily intentional. It was just like, now that we have this piece of work, wow, this feels very, you know? So I would say Lauren Hill is the one that comes shooting to mind first when I think of the whole completed project, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I agree with you in the terms of when you really listen to your inner self, with music at least, I feel like that's when people connect more. You know what I mean? Like Lauren Hill was Lauren Hill because that's who she was. D'Angelo, exactly. D'Angelo, because that's who she was, you know? But obviously the influences are going to seep in. And that's mm-hmm. why I love this project, because you feel it, but I also know it's you, because it's mad unique. So, Thank you. No, mm-hmm. it does, of course. And something that, another thing I always ask, but I'm going to do a little different this time, because I usually like to just name the song and t- like let you tell me about it. But mm-hmm. all the songs are mad good, <laughs> so it's kind of hard for me to like, <laughs> even... Uh-huh. Uh, that is so like, kind. No, I feel like I'm, I'm being genuine though. Like it really is, every song is mad good. So um, I just want you to tell me one that you have to talk about. Like just one of the the, uh, the tracks that's you, like it's on your, your your heart, your mind. That's the number one for you right now. Um, You know what? I'm gonna talk about a song called No Capacity because I haven't spoken mm-hmm. about it yet in any of the interviews. And I feel like, I personally feel like No Capacity is gonna be like a creeper on the project. Mm-hmm. I found like, this happens a lot with artists. The one that, the one song we really like doesn't necessarily do the best. And the one that we're like, eh, eh, whatever, like that's the one that people tend to gravitate to. But I don't know, when it comes to No Capacity, I have this feeling in myself that it's gonna be one that grows on people because first of all, number one, it's really special to me because um, the producer of that song is called Sean Hamilton. And he is uh, Dark Child's protege, Rodney Jerkins. And obviously I love Dark Child, like grew up on him. He's one of the most goated producers out there. And I feel like, music heads like producers people that really tune into sonics um will really take that song number one because he does crazy things in the music but secondly i want to talk about that song because it signifies a real shift in my life i have struggled for so long so 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 long to establish boundaries for myself to even know what my boundaries are like what you know i people know me mostly mainly for being this humble soul and I love that and I always want to protect and preserve that but there's definitely a thing there's definitely a thing of being too humble where you don't even understand your own worth you don't you know understand your power you don't walk in it um you kind of just tolerate everything and you people please and just to kind of keep everybody happy I'm the eldest sibling and I'm a woman and I come from a Nigerian household. So that thing of always like wanting to make sure everybody else is happy before you even check in with yourself is very, very real. Um, And even now in my 28 years of living, establishing my boundaries is still something I find difficult to do. But at the time that I wrote the song, No Capacity, it felt like a big personal milestone for me because being able to identify actually Right now, I don't have the capacity to help you. I might have all the intention in my heart to do so, but I need to actually prioritize myself and prioritize my mental health and prioritize my happiness. Um, It was a big, big, big deal for me in my life. And I think it dominoes start, it was like a domino effect after that. Once I really was able to be like, no, I'm honoring my boundaries. Might feel a bit uncomfortable, but then life becomes more comfortable after you go through that period of discomfort, life actually becomes more comfortable because you're living in a way that you actually want to, you know? I gotta say, <laughs> you really, you're amazing. I love how deep you get into this. I love that, I love that, I love that, because it really is reflective, uh, you know? And you, you so much stuff that you touched on that I actually had in my notes. Um, and one of them was, oh, the, wow. was the production of that song, um, because I'm actually a fan. Okay. That's my number one all-time producers dark child and that production in the past is crazy so thank you no i uh, that's that's awesome that is so cool i just think the whole (laughs) man i'm gonna move on i'm gonna move on because you really got me speaking (laughs) i don't even mean that i just think i really love how deep you're getting into stuff like this because it's not i don't want to say it's rare nowadays but because it's definitely coming back but there was, there was a time that you didn't get to feel that, you know what I mean? Like people weren't really putting in 
so much into the music and so much thought oh, for sure. and so much you know stuff that touches people so i appreciate it and i'm just glad we I, i'm glad i get to hear it firsthand it makes me want to listen to the project even deeper you know what i mean um oh thank you and but, thank you for giving me the space to you know get deep with it definitely definitely so let's hop into like one or two of my favorites and then got one more question i'm gonna let you get out of here um Ooh. i gotta talk about love self because like i said i just think that's almost a lauren a lauren vibe from the very mm -hmm. beginning the speaking part even the writing of like the note sound like you writing at the end i think it's a perfect intro just tell me how that song yeah. was making that song how you felt you know just give me a little bit about it you know what um so that was the only song on the project that wasn't written over the span of like the past year. Everything else on the project was written over the past year because, you know, most of it was, or all, all of the songs stemmed from specific experiences I had with this particular partner, right? Mm -hmm. But um, the intro was actually written in 2017. Oh, wow. And it was written, well, the song, the song. My mum talking on it and everything like was an, an addition after the fact, but I'll get to that. So. The song itself was written in 2017. And at the time I wrote it with the intention of it, of it being an intro to a project, but 2017, I was a very different, um, very different artist to the person I am now. I just still didn't know myself like half as much as I do now. So I had the idea, I had the intention, but I just did not follow through with like, executing. And honestly, now looking back, I know why, because it was meant to fit perfectly on this pro on this particular project. But I wrote that in 2017. And the um the driving force behind writing that song actually was realizing, like starting to realize that the industry was not everything I thought it to be. And when I say that, I mean so I started in the industry doing covers, right? I started just singing covers on Twitter of songs that i enjoyed it was so innocent and it was so pure i had no idea about the music industry the business nothing and through that i started to realize oh people like my voice i have an audience now when you come into an industry so innocently and it's not a thing where i mean i knew in my heart i wanted to be a singer right but imagine just like i don't know i'm just doing this thing that i enjoy and it just makes me happy and through that like it's almost like the people in the community throw you into the deep end like oh no we need we need original music blah blah but because i came in that way i was so naive i was so just i was just so naive basically and when i started to realize in 2017 like oh this is a this is actually a business like people prioritize numbers and people um, are prejudiced against you because of how you look and whether you fit a certain you know appeal or so many different things that was really the stimulus behind this song this song was like a like a an appeal almost of like let's take it back to a time when it was the important things that actually mattered and not all of this like decoration do you know what i mean so that's where the real that's where the initial song actually came from um so yeah, I hope that gives you like enough insight into it. <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I just love the fact that 2017, you know, like you said, you're such a different artist and to bring that into this project with something that, I, I, like you said, you, I'm assuming you recorded all the songs within the year and for it to fit so nicely, it's like, like you said, like in, in the beginning, you kind of mentioned God's timing, just timing in general. So how it all ties in is pretty amazing. Um, and I'm guessing this is another important moment for you is more than enough with Layla Hathaway. Um, Ooh, yeah, yes, sir. I talk about that. Got to talk about that because that's one of the goats, one of the legends. So just tell me everything about just that whole that whole song, you know, the conversation on the phone. Uh, well, I guess it's a voicemail and just the whole thing. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, more than enough, basically. The way that me and Layla Hathaway even started, like, had our first interaction was I woke up one day and, you know, checked my phone as you do, and I saw that she had followed me on Twitter. So I was like, wow, you know, went to go double check to make sure, like, it was really the legit Layla Hathaway, and it indeed was. So I was like, okay, this is crazy. Went to my Instagram, and I saw she had followed me there as well. So at that point, oh, and she didn't just follow me there as well. She 
had commented on something, basically just giving me my flowers and just like singing my praises. And I kid you not, I've had quite a few, you know, pretty cool people cross paths with me or discover me in my time. But that one, usually when it happens, I'm like, just take a backseat, chill, don't do too much. Like, because the thing is, <laughs> it's a bit of a side tangent, but I think people look at me as a star. I mean, I am a star, but I'm also a human being and I, I'm very much still in touch with my inner child. So when things be happening, when I literally see like my dreams unfolding in front of my eyes or somebody that I find so respectable and notable notice me and give me flowers, I still get excited. Like I went front. So when that happened, I jumped straight into her DMs um, and I basically just gave her her flowers. I just said like, yo, I'm in awe of you. Thank you. Um, and the voice note that you hear at the start of More Than Enough was her response to that voice note. So that was the first like thing she really said directly to me. Um, and yeah, it just it was just like an extra special touch to that song, which is already so special to me. Yeah, and that's just the type of song that I feel like I might not play it every day. Like let's just say like summertime, I might play that every day. I might play What's Love every day, but that's the type of song more than enough that like when you need it, you're gonna come to that song because it stood out. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's it's the production, the way you sound on it, it just stuck out so much. So that's a crazy song. One of my favorites on it. Um and you know, there's I would love to speak about all of them. Hopefully if I, when I see you again, we we speak again, we could talk about more. Um, but I just wanna know. You know, for the rest of the year, what are your goals? I know you're a Pandora's artist to watch for 2024. So it's just yes. like some goals for the rest of the year to keep this project alive, to keep, you know, your spirit alive and so on. Honestly, like, <laughs> ah, man, I'm at a place in my life where I have never felt so optimistic about the things that I want. Um, for the first time, I really feel like my biggest biggest wildest dreams are within reach and so this year i'm just trying to come for it oh i'll be real with you um i would love to tour i would love to um just really break into the u.s space as an r&b household name i've kind of laid that foundation in the uk um already but i feel like there's a ceiling there when it comes to r&b so now my main focus is really breaking into the u.s market becoming a household name um touring having like selling my own merch like just you know hitting all the milestones when it comes to music career and also just helping people helping and healing people that's really the most important thing to me actually above all the other stuff helping and healing people marking errors in people's lives like you know there's certain songs maybe it's drake songs or whatever you've heard that are like damn this takes me back to a time in my life like that kind of vibe i really want to create moments for people with my music and um finally i just want to be happy like in my heart you know i want to be happy um of course i want to you know make money with what i'm doing and <laughs> live a comfortable wealthy life but yeah. at the base of it i think i just want to be happy man i i love that that's the perfect way to end it that's the perfect way to you know I, i'm just i'm really hoping the best for your career and i hope this interview helps with introducing people to you know in the u.s to this to your music and you know expands your audience because you deserve that for sure and like I said, I slept on you. I'm sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> you me. here now, and that's all yes. that matters. I'm here now, and I, I plan on making sure a lot more people know. So, say mm -hmm. I appreciate you. I, I really, I love how much thought you put into the project, and I believe people will, if they don't see it now, eventually they're gonna see it regardless. So, it's a really solid piece of work, and thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. Yeah, absolutely, Nico. Thank you too. Thank you. Really enjoyed this interview.